My dear parishioners, it is certainly fitting that we strive to honor St. Joseph as best we can by means of a high mass today and our devotions and prayers, because those who love Our Lady, those who are consecrated to Our Lady, should have a great devotion to her chaste spouse, St. Joseph. It is a little bit troubling that in the history of the Church, there was almost no devotion to St. Joseph for about the first thousand years. In fact, there wasn't even a feast of St. Joseph on the calendar until something like the 14th century. In the uh, 14th century, actually early 15th century, there was a theologian in Paris named Jean or Jean Gerson. And Gerson had a great devotion to St. Joseph, and he's the first one that wrote about it and spoke about St. Joseph and his prerogatives. And then he came come to the Council of Trent in the 1500s, which furthered devotion to St. Joseph, and then there began to be a feast observed in honor of St. Joseph throughout the church. And in the late 1800s, or 1860s thereabouts, Pope Pius IX proclaimed St. Joseph as the patron saint of the Universal Church. And over the last couple centuries, only has it been where universal devotion to St. Joseph has grown and developed in the Church. And we might wonder, why is that? Why was he so hidden and unknown? Well, theologians explain it for a couple of reasons. First of all, in the early centuries, it was important the emphasis was on our Lord and a proper understanding of the mysteries such as the Incarnation, the Blessed Trinity, the two natures in one divine person, and counteracting the different heresies, Arianism, Nestorianism, Eutychianism, these different heresies in the early centuries. So that took up the attention and the focus. And even our Blessed Mother was not as greatly honored in the early centuries as she was later. But another reason is given by St. Louis Marie de Montfort in his wonderful book, True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he says that Our Lady's humility was so great that she asked her divine spouse, who is the Holy Ghost, to not allow the sacred writers, the evangelists, to say much about her, to only say what was necessary for the greater honor and glory of God and the devotion to our Lord. That was Our Lady's humility. And I think that St. Joseph must have been the same. He only wanted to be hidden. In fact, we know very little of St. Joseph from the Bible. There is not even one recorded word spoken by St. Joseph in the Bible. But the greatest honor of St. Joseph is that he was the father, the foster father is true, but legally, truly the father of Jesus himself. And when Our Lady found St. Joseph in the temple, I'm sorry, when Our Lady and St. Joseph found our Lord in the temple after three days, what did she say to Jesus? Thy father and I have been seeking thee sovereign. She didn't say, thy foster father and I, but thy father and I. Now, I have just finished reading a wonderful book on St. Joseph, and it's called, the, the title says it all. It says, The Man Nearest to Christ. St. Joseph lived with Jesus and Mary for 30 years. He observed their lives every day at close hand. So he had the opportunity to observe their uh, virtues and their lives. And that's why St. Joseph is a patron saint of the interior life and of the prayer life because he must have prayed continuously. He meditated on the virtues of Jesus and Mary, prayed for the grace to imitate them. St. Joseph is called in the Bible a just man, which means he had all the virtues. But nothing is known for sure of his early life until he espouses with our blessed mother. Now there is a tradition that when the priests in the temple wanted to find a suitable husband for Mary, they assembled the eligible bachelors who were known to be virtuous and good men, and they told them all to bring a staff. And they put these staffs in the temple overnight, and they prayed that God would choose 
the spouse, and they must have had their names on them. And in the morning they went in, and St. Joseph's staff, which was just a dry stick, had bloomed, and there were lilies, which is why in the statues of St. Joseph he is usually depicted holding a staff with the lilies. But the other reason for that, because it's a lily, is the symbol of purity, to remind us of St. Joseph's perfect chastity. Many theologians believe that he was without even any temptations of the flesh. But what we do know is that he, like a lady, had made a vow of perpetual virginity, and that he was completely pleasing to God. Many authors also believe that like St. John the Baptist, St. Joseph was cleansed of original sin in his mother's womb before he was even born. Also, theologians believe that St. Joseph, like our lady, is now in heaven, both body and soul. That at the time of the death of our Lord, we read in St. Matthew that the bodies of many of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised from the dead. And so many believe that St. Joseph's body was among those, and that he remained that his soul and body were reunited and taken to heaven. There is also, or has been over the last hundred years or so, or more, hundred fifty years, a, an effort by theologians to have a special title given to devotion to St. Joseph. Now, many of you know that in Latin we have words for our veneration, our devotion to God, the worship is called latria, which means adoration. To the saints, it's called dublia, the worship of veneration. And to Our Lady, there's a unique veneration that's called hyperdublia. But the theologians would like there to be a name for the devotion between Our Lady and then the other saints, and they call it protodublia, the honor of Saint Joseph. So. We should strive to give him the special honor, and because we consecrate ourselves entirely to our Blessed Mother, we should ask St. Joseph to help us to live that consecration, to be truly devout slaves of Jesus through Mary, as he was. Much more could be said about St. Joseph, but it is contained in this, that he practiced all the virtues, and yet he was so humble, so hidden. St. Teresa of Avila, who lived in the 16th century and reformed the Carmelite order, said that the devotion to St. Joseph must grow and spread in the latter times. And maybe that's another reason why he was hidden in the early centuries of the Church, because God, you might say, has preserved him for us. To pray to St. Joseph to help the Church in these difficult times in which we live, and to help us individually to love and serve Jesus and Mary, as they deserve, in imitation of Mary. So let us honor St. Joseph today, and especially ask him to help us to live our faith and to be truly devout and holy Catholics, honoring our Lord, our Blessed Mother, as he did. St. Joseph, pray for us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.